I call my work social landscape because I reached a point where I'm less concerned about whether or not it is art than whether it has qualities and characteristics of uh, the narrative threads that make up my life. I'm trying to uh, create visual evidence of having been here. Visualizing non-buoyant objects floating is seeing people living courageously while suffering the symptoms of selective invisibility. Freedom, identity, responsibility, these are human conditions that allow us to float. My family. Well, I'm a photographer and Beverly is a storyteller and Kenna is a dancer choreographer. I just grew up with a great childhood and surrounded by art and I remember my dad would have a dark room and there was a time that I got to see the photos develop. My mom would be in plays and we would go to rehearsal. So yeah, it was just a part of life. I just thought that that's what you do. Art is an integral part of our family and not art like with a capital A kind of thing, it's just part of who we are. My career was not photography. My career was engineering and photography has been my creative outlet. It grew from being what I fondly call camera club photography where you were very conscious of the rules of composition and what not to do to being a means of personal expression where I'm more interested in what I'm trying to say rather than how I'm trying to do it. Bill calls himself a photographer of social landscape. And for a long time I thought, what exactly does that mean? He's just, he's taking pictures of things. But when you look at the images that he produces, they have various layers. And I've learned over time to see some of the layers. The engineer and the artist in this creative tension in me, I'm most satisfied when there is balance between the two personas. And the engineer has enough about how, and the artist has enough about why, and then we can proceed forward on some visual theme. So that was sort of the impetus behind surface tensions. Surface tensions is the physical property of the surface of a liquid that allows a non-buoyant object to float if you place it carefully on the surface. And that idea carries over to me of navigating my way through life. Surface tensions as a project one of the motivations was my discovery of the fact that Richard Wright wrote haiku later in life and he used photography as a means of illustrating the haiku that he wrote. I said, okay, I'm going to try to write haiku. And then I discovered, oops, haiku is supposed to be about nature. Your stuff's not about nature. You can't call it haiku. I said, okay, I'll call it 17s because that's the sum of all the syllables in the three lines of 575. Five. So I call them 17s. The haiku things became about me, like the photography, and about the family, and about situations. And he's taking images, some of which I'm very familiar with, those like that have his reflection in them, or those that have his feet in them. And he's putting them all together. And then, it turned into a book. And then I kind of thought it was done. But I guess in the back of his mind, this idea was, yes, he intended it for it to be a performance piece. Page 10. A colorful life imagined in black and white layers of stories, true and fictitious, 
delivered in prose and verse to amuse and teach. Surface Tensions as a performance came from the content of the book. Stories from the past, allusions to the present, and disturbances forming the future. So clearly Beverly was always the storyteller. You caught the sun and shared it with us for a time, and now your jewel-decked ship with sails of silk floats in and out of our dreams. I was always the allusion to the present, and Kenna was always the disturbance forming the future. Standing tall and looking forward in the direction of where we came. I was fortunate enough to be selected to receive a State Arts Board Artist Initiative Grant, and that funded the performance of Surface Tensions. Okay. Wait, he's got it. Start the images, and yeah. Beverly leads us off. 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 The performance was a collaboration that was designed by my father, but performed by all of us in the family. The process of collaboration comes easy because creating work and performing work together is another example of how we live together. The last scene is a new beginning. The performance ended with the idea that the path you are making is behind you. The path behind me is mine. My path is behind me. The path, path behind me path is mine. Is the one behind me. Anytime you can see a path, you're looking at someone else's path. You've got to make a conscious effort to look at your own path. It's a way of expressing the importance of knowing where you've come from and bringing with you all you have because that's what makes you who you are in the present. Keep your eyes on the prize. The lesson was learned. Everybody was happy. Samba Bayane. Minnesota Original is made possible by the State Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota.